Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome to Jesus the Healer, and we are so glad to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. And I tell you what, we're releasing our faith for you to receive answers yes. for your life. Amen. Yes. I have a studio audience here who's joined us today, and we invite you to become a student along with all of us. Get hold of your Bible and a notepad and a pen or pencil and follow along or your device, whatever you use. And uh, we've been teaching on the mind, and we are so grateful to know what the Word says about the mind. The most wonderful thing is to know that Jesus purchased for us a sound mind. That is part of our inheritance in Christ. And so a sound mind has to have a proper diet and the thoughts of God, the word of God is the diet for the sound mind. And as we feed on that sound mind, we have a renewed mind. Amen. And that renewed mind transforms our life. And so you can't live a transformed life apart from paying attention to what goes on in your thought life. And so uh, we, we, want to, we want to live a life that is blessed by our thoughts and not harassed by our thoughts. Amen. So thank God the Word has much to say about it. And so we're students of that. One of the things that we've been starting with as our golden text every episode is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 where Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, For God has not given us mm -hmm. the spirit of fear. That means yeah. fear free for the rest of our life. Amen. Amen. But he has given unto us the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. So that's what he's already given. We're not trying to get it. We're, that's already our present possession, but we have to feed a sound mind, sound thoughts. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so we're so grateful to know that that sound mind is part of our inheritance. The Amplified Translation describes a sound mind. It says it's a calm mind. It's a well-balanced mind. It's a disciplined mind. And it's a self-controlled mind. So know this. These words show us that you don't walk in this soundness of mind on accident. Right. It's on purpose. You're yeah. disciplining your thought life. You're, you're controlling what you let in mm -hmm. yeah. into your thought life. Amen. 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 And we've been talking in the last couple of episodes about answering it, that if we're going to have and enjoy the sound mind that belongs to us in Christ, we have to answer everything that is yes. not of soundness. Yes. What will draw us out of a sound flow? We have to answer that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So many times people are sitting back and waiting for God to do something for them. And he's authorized us to answer things yes. that oppose a sound mind. Yes. Um, one of the statements we've been making is that our usefulness to God grows as we grow in knowing what to answer. When opposition shows up, we have to answer it. And as we are skillful in answering opposition with the word, then God is able to use us in greater and greater ways as we grow in our skill and our knowledge of what a right answer is. Amen. You know, um, the thing is, is that if somebody were to say, well, uh, I've got a devil. Well, if you're Christian, you're going to have to qualify that. Because a Christian cannot have a devil in their heart, there in their spirit. Go. Can't yeah. do it. Right. Why? Because, because the Holy Spirit dwells there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But can you get a devil in your mind? Yes, if you listen to him. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. If you listen to him, then he can get a hold on your thought life. Well, I tell you what, what will break that, what will break that yoke off your mind? The anointing. The anointing that is on the word yeah. also yeah. will break that, will break any kind of 
wrong thinking off. Amen. And so thank God for that. Our greatest defense against the devil is a renewed mind. What is a renewed mind? It's a mind that thinks right. It's a mind that thinks God's thoughts after him. We've taken God's thoughts and made them our own, but we don't float into enjoying a sound mind. We have to on purpose arrive there by answering wrong thoughts, forbidding wrong thoughts. Don't sit and listen to worried thoughts. Answer them. Don't listen to fearful thoughts. Answer them. Don't listen to depressed thoughts. Answer them. And so we've been, we've been focusing on the sound mind answers to keep out wrong thinking. Amen. Um, to stay in the flow of a sound mind, we have to answer rightly. And we can't just rely on somebody else to do it all for us. Amen. Uh, we were looking at in the previous episode, Luke chapter four, and we just kind of started into this passage, but Luke chapter four and verse one, we want to start there. And Jesus had just come from being baptized in the river Jordan by John the apostle, by uh, John the Baptist. And uh, it was at this time when he was baptized that the anointing came upon him. Now his, his public ministry began. Yes. yes. His earthly ministry didn't begin until he was 30 years old. Up till that time, he was preparing. Now notice this, for 30 years, he was preparing. 30 yes. years, 30 yeah. years of preparation yeah. time. And only three years to fulfill what he prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. When you're prepared, it doesn't take long to fulfill. <clears throat> it's when you're unprepared that things get drawn out and you struggle and things. So Jesus was preparing for 30 years. Amen. Verse one of Luke chapter four, it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. So he returned from Jordan. What was it, Jordan? He was baptized by John the Baptist. And as we said previously, I love the phrase where it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy yes. Ghost. If Jesus needed to be mm-hmm. full of the Holy Ghost to fulfill what God had yes. for him. We need to be full of the yes. Holy Ghost yes. to fulfill what God has for us. And I like what it says further in this. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost was led by the Spirit. Yes. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, it's easier to recognize how the Spirit's leading you. Yes. Yes. Many times people are struggling to know how God is leading them. Well, take time to fill up. Fill up with... Fill up with the word, fill up with the Holy Ghost. Well, Pastor Nancy, how do I get full of the Holy Ghost? Well, take time to speak in other tongues. Amen. 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 Uh, Speaking in other tongues helps your your fullness level. And so it says in verse two, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, Jesus did eat nothing. And when when they were ended, these 40 days, he afterward hungered. Look at verse three. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So notice, and we were saying this previously, that the enemy said something partially right, but he tainted it with something wrong. What he said was right, the son of God. What he said was wrong was if. If you are the son of God. Tell you what, don't let the devil beat you on a, on a game of technicality, yeah. a, a yes. technicality of words. Yes. Yes. He plays right. word games That's with right. you. Yes. He plays word games. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't catch him in those word games, you can get into wrong thinking. And so Jesus didn't fall into that if I'm the son of God. He did not entertain the word if. Uh-huh. And so he said, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Look at verse four. And Jesus answered him. And Jesus answered him. And Jesus answered him. He did not let the enemy have the last word. The last word stands. You cannot afford to let the devil have the last word in your life. There were four kids in our family growing up and I had two older brothers and one older sister And uh, mother would not, there's one thing that mother did not allow. None of us got the last word. And she'd say, don't you try to get the last word with me. (laughs) Meaning she always had a further answer. And sometimes the answer was expressed in very (laughs) physical ways. (laughs) 
if she had to, it, it could sometimes call for a spanking in that, you know, and that would be an answer, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Yes. But we have to realize this is that the last word does stand. Yeah, Mother even went so far as if you tried to roll your eyes, yeah. that is an answer. Yeah. <laughs> and she didn't even let that, that could not be the last answer, brother. She didn't threaten you. I'll, I'll send your eyes in the next week if you want them. <laughs> you want to roll them, we'll roll them all the way to next week, sister. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? And, and uh, or if you try to stomp off, uh-huh. you know, slam the door. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All of that to her was you trying to get the last word, and that wasn't going to work. She'd say, "You just stay in this room and just keep looking at me." <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we'll not go to all of Mother's raising tips, child raising tips, but man, she had some good ones. <laughs> but she understood the last word is the, the one who spoke last is boss. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's the boss position right. is the last word. Yes. Jesus didn't let Satan ever have the last word. Listen, if you ever notice through Jesus' earthly ministry, when the devil and Jesus were on the same scene at the, at the same time, you know who left last, yeah. and it was Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? He knew the last one standing was the right. victor. Right. Oh, yeah. glory. Amen. glory to God. And that's what the devil wants. He wants the last word. Mm-hmm. You right. answer everything. Don't let that symptom have the last word. Don't that's let right. lack yeah. have the last yes. word. That's it's right. not necessarily words you hear that talk to you. Feelings will talk to sure. you. Yeah. Yeah. Finances will talk to you or the lack of them will try to talk to you. I remember when we were endeavoring to build this building that we're in right now. It's part of our church building. And uh, this was undeveloped acreage when my husband found it. And we had it a time before we started the building process. And it would have these, uh, you know, these weeds on it. And so Ed said he would come out to the property and pray over it. My husband, he said he'd come out and he'd pray over the property. He said those weeds would start talking to him and said, we're always going to live here. (laughs) What's that mean? We're not leaving. What's that mean? This building isn't coming up. And they said, we've been here for thousands of years and we're going to stay here for thousands of years. And he'd get on the phone and he'd call my son. He'd say, bring the bush hog up. (laughs) What's he doing? He said, I'd answer the weeds that tried to talk to me. I mowed them down. (laughs) Well, you got to have something to say to everything that tries to hold you back, hinder you, rob from you, steal from you. Amen. 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 And so when when the enemy was talking to Jesus, he answered him. Now, Jesus didn't think, well, maybe I'm not the son of God since the devil's standing here talking to me. He didn't question just because the devil was talking that he, that he was not in authority. That's right. uh-huh. That's right. Jesus knew he was in authority. Mm-hmm. I don't care who's talking to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So don't think your faith isn't working just because you hear the devil talk. Oh, you so. can't stop the devil from talking, but you can yeah. certainly have something to say when he's done. There you yeah. Go. Yeah. And you, need, you better have something yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so in verse 4, Jesus answered him and he said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, I want you to look at this. Satan tempted him regarding bread, turning a stone into bread to satisfy his physical need. Jesus answered regarding bread. Mm -hmm. Notice this. Jesus had that. It's not just answer. It's answering right answer in line with the temptation. Now, Satan, if Satan would have said this to him, if thou be the son of God, command that this stone be made made bread. That's what the temptation was. If Jesus would have said, I'm anointed, Mm -hmm. I'm the son of God, my father loves me, are those true? Yes, Yes. but that's not the answer to that temptation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. You don't just give a random answer. You answer specifically in line with the temptation. General answers don't get specific victories. You generally, you just generally believe in God. Uh You get generally nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you specifically put your faith on something. Specifics wins victories. Amen. I'm reminded of a a pastor that lived in a a third world country and 
He had, uh, this was early on in his ministry. He grew to have a, a large church with a great influence in his nation. But early on, he began hearing faith being taught. And uh, he began getting a hold of that. That started sinking into his spirit. And uh, the best way for him to get around was really not a motored vehicle at that time because the traffic was so bad. You know, the streets were so congested. He said the best way for him to get around was a bicycle because he could easily navigate in and out. And so he began believing God for a bicycle. And this is what he said. He said, Father... The word says that what things have you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. He says, I need a bicycle. I desire a bicycle, so I believe you for a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds pretty specific, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And so about three or four months later, still a bicycle hasn't shown up. And he goes back to God and he says, now, God, I know your word works. And he says, I, I released my faith for a bicycle. He said, why didn't I get a bicycle? He says, I need it. He says, as a pastor, I, it takes me hours a day to walk, to visit the people, to get to where I'm going. And he said, it's a, it's a, it's a necessity to save my time to have that bicycle. And he said, God spoke to him and said, you never told me what kind you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? You weren't specific enough. Just generally, a bicycle. Now, it sounds specific to us. But see, we're the ones that need it. What kind do we want? Yeah. Yeah. Don't let God do the picking of the kind. He's not using it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He knows we use it. He wants to suit and please us. Yeah. So he said, wow, okay. I want a red Schwinn bicycle. And he said within a week, he had a red Schwinn bicycle. Why? His answer was waiting for the specifics of his faith. The specifics yeah. yes. of his faith. And so when we're general, you know, people will say, well, I believe God. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you believe? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Believing generally gets you generally nothing. Yes. Generally. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you wouldn't even know that it showed up because you weren't specific yeah. enough to even know if what you wanted showed up because you, you, you weren't even articulate what you wanted. You didn't even specify or even, even come up with the thought of what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How would you know if you got it? Amen. Yeah, amen. Right. Then l let me say this. People would say, well, if I get too specific, it makes it, it makes it like a prolonged thing because it makes it harder for God. There's too many specifics. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> actually, the more specific you are, the faster it comes, yeah. not the slower it comes so because God's got to find yeah. one with all the yeah. specifics. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. When, he w when this pastor was general in his request, it was delayed. Yeah. But when he got specific, it was accelerated. Oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Th this is what we see about Jesus. When he answered the devil, he answered specifically in line with the temptation. Uh -huh. yes. Many people say, well, God loves me. He just won't let me fail. Now, listen. Listen. If, let, let's say, for example, someone's facing a physical condition. And they say, well, the Lord loves me. I know he loves me. He won't let me fail. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to be more specific than that. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, God loves you. But that's not the answer to that test. Right. Yes. Right. The answer Amen. to that test is what price was paid to redeem you from that sickness. Wow. You're going to have to talk about yeah, that. That's right. You're going to have to know that. You're going to have to put yeah. that in your mouth. Yes. Yeah. So when Satan tempted Jesus in line with bread, Jesus answered in line with bread. Yeah. 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 Amen. You notice yeah. that. He didn't just give us, he didn't give a general answer. Well, I'm the son of God. Being the son of God was not the right answer for that. Yeah. Was he the son of God? Yes, but yes. that won't answer that temptation. Amen. You're a child of God. Right. Lack shows up and you say, I'm a child of God. Lack's not afraid that you're a child of God. You have to know something that belongs to a child of God. Yes. And what is, I'm redeemed from lack. Yeah. You better say it. No, it. You had to be specific. You understand that? General answers get generally nothing. Specific answers get accelerated help. Wow. Amen. 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 And so Jesus answered specifically. He said, it is written. So notice the policy of Jesus in dealing with the devil. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Now, this Bible... It's written on the pages here of what God said. I cannot just answer 
a need, a threat, a temptation with words on a page. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's written here. It's that it's written here yes. Yes. in my spirit. Yes. It has to be written in your spirit. Yes. Yes. You have to get it in your spirit before it's spendable. Mm-hmm. If it's just in your mind, it's not spendable. Right. Because out of the heart flow the issues of life. You understand that? Out of the heart flow the issues of life. That's, that's the place where life issues out of. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is out of the heart. Yes. And not just the mind. You can mentally know these things, but you got to get them in your heart. So when Jesus saying it is written, he wasn't just referring to the parchment paper in the synagogue. Right. Yes. Yes. He's saying it's written in here. 30 years of writing what God said on his spirit. Listen, Jesus had to go through the same spiritual development process we have to. When he was born as a baby, he was stripped It says he was stripped of his mighty glory and virtue when he came here. He had to rewrite everything upon his heart. Just like us, we write these things on our heart. Amen. Amen. Because it was written here in his spirit, when he spoke it, it was a living thing. Because it was written in his spirit. Take time to get the word written in your heart. As the tongue of a ready, the pen of a ready writer, your tongue is that pen writing it on your yes, heart. Yes. You lay in bed and you meditate that word and you speak it to you yourself. That's what you're doing. You're writing it on your heart. And then when the, an answer is called for, you're, you're saying it is written mm, here. Yes. It is written here. Yeah, that's good. And then you won't be shaken off of it. You won't be swayed off of it. And that's what I, I'm so, so convinced that Jesus is saying, it is written yes. in him. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word yeah. of God. Yes. Notice when Jesus answered that temptation, that temptation was over. Mm. Yes. That's right. He wasn't tempted that way again. Why? Because he answered it right. When things keep cycling through, cycling through, cycling through. Now, I know there will be counterattacks to things, but when we answer right and with skillful, and when we answer from a place written here, uh, many times you don't ever face that problem again. Amen. 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 Now, the second temptation that's listed in verse 5. And the devil taketh him up into a high mountain. Now look at this. It gets a little bit more, if I could say this, dramatic, Uh, doesn't it? He's no longer dealing with just bread. Now he's taking him up Mm -hmm. to another place. Um, Notice Jesus answered right with that first temptation. But notice another one came that had to be answered. Mm -hmm. Just because uh, you answered something right it doesn't mean your faith didn't work just because there's a second temptation. Yeah. Just because the devil keeps Amen. talking uh-huh. doesn't mean your faith didn't work uh-huh. the first time. Yeah. Jesus' faith worked with that first temptation, but yeah. the devil kept so going. Yeah. So Amen. You keep going. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Verse 5, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Well, what did he do that? That's in the spirit realm, mm-hmm. you see. He showed him all that was under his, under his control, so to speak. And the devil said to him. Now, what is, was the devil using to tempt him with words? Right. Words. He shows him mm-hmm. something, and then with words, he's offering him something. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, let's look, look at this. Did all that belong to, Jesus, to Satan? Sure it did. He said it was given to him. Who gave it to him? Not God, Adam. Adam. And so he was offering Jesus something here. What did he, now, look at what he offered him. All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. He was offering Jesus victory he was offering him victory through a crossless crown. Uh-huh. Wow. 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 He was offering him a glory, a bloodless glory. Oh my. Bloodless oh my. glory. Oh my. Wow. He was offering him another route to ownership of all of this, mm-hmm. to be Lord of it through a, a, a route without price. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. 
Well, there would have been a price ultimately. Yes. 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 Amen. It was a shortcut yeah. Yeah, that's right. to fleeting yeah. lordship. Uh-huh. It wouldn't have been the lordship offered. Yeah. Satan offered him fleeting power and glory for himself alone. Yeah. Notice he said, look at this. Let, let's look at this. Again, in verse 6, all this power will I give thee. Jesus didn't come here to get it for himself. Mm-hmm. Right. He was offering him all this for himself. Jesus held out. He wasn't looking for relief. He was going for victory. And he held out and he paid the price with his own blood. Amen. Not a bloodless victory, but a a blood-filled victory. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he wasn't getting this power, this authority, this dominion for himself. He's getting it for us. He was offering, Satan was offering Jesus something for himself, leaving us out. But Jesus was here to bring us in. I tell you, there's a lot connected, connected with this. But notice verse 7. Uh, well, let's read verse 6 again. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me for, for to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Verse 8, And Jesus answered. He was, he was offered a lot. What was it? The devil would bid high for you. Yes. The devil was bidding high for Jesus. The devil will bid high for the plan of God on your life. Don't take it. There's a higher flow God has for you, a greater glory, a greater reward. Don't settle for something far less. Amen. Well, some of these things we're teaching in our book called Answer It. We want you to get hold of your copy of it and uh, go to DufresneMinistries.org. Let us know that you want your copy and we'll get that right out because I tell you what, these things are life-changing. Life-changing. And uh, we want to remind you until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Colossians tells us that Jesus spoiled, defeated, and stripped Satan in his total conquest and victory over him. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.